So, please give a warm round of applause to our speaker this morning. Thank you. So I hope you had a great party yesterday. Uh, it seems like a few people are still hangover, but um, of course that's, uh, that's part of open source, right? So I'm not a developer actually, I'm a designer. I also don't work for Mozilla. So if you think like, hey, I cannot do that, that's not true. Every one of us can start contributing. So I'm going to talk about how we do open design at Mozilla and not only, and also about a few of my experiences in other communities. So a bit about me. I'm a speaker at Mozilla. So um, Mozilla was so nice to bring me here and to speak about open design at Mozilla. I'm also a representative in Albania. I'm not based here, although I can speak pretty okay -ish German. So if you have any question, also feel free to say to me in German. I'm the founder of Ura Design. It's a startup focused only on free open source design. So projects which need help can, uh, can request it to us. And we, have, uh, we work with Inkscape and GIMP and really help also a lot of open source projects which lack design and don't know where to go because agencies might have a different way of dealing with them. And I'm a board member at Open Left Hackerspace. It's one of the few hackerspaces in Albania. And also I'm a community manager on SidePoint. SidePoint is a web uh, portal for web developers. So there's this thing that um, in many open source communities, people perceive the idea of open source that it's only code, right? So if you do it open source, you put your code in some repo and it's like it's open in magic way, right? But um, I believe that's not only the case. Open source is a much bigger movement, and especially with free software, like, I don't want to go into the debate about free software and open source, so excuse me beforehand to that. Um, but I believe that we need to offer also other contributors, not only programmers, the chance to contribute to open source, even if they don't have the technical knowledge. So. We thought the same in many other communities, and I was trying to help a lot of communities to offer these paths for people like me who don't know how to code. There's this thing with designers and developers who they cannot communicate well with each other sometimes because they have different perspectives on things. For designers, priorities might be not the priorities developers have. For example, if you get an open source um, program out there, chances are the user experience might not be the best because designers weren't involved into that. But I can totally understand why not, because we are quite a bit arrogant at some times. We want our thing to get, to get done the way we want it to be without leaving so much feedback to the community. And this is due to the fact that the free software and open source movement started like 30 years ago with uh, the Free Software Foundation. And back then, um, yeah, well, designers weren't so interested into that, right? And developers had a much bigger head start than us. And so they could really learn from scratch how to deal with these issues. And well, designers, well, we got into the play a bit later, like a few years ago, where bigger companies like Red Hat or SUSE recognized that, hey, this, we need to push much bigger efforts into that. And I'm really happy to see that also other more grassroots projects put some importance into this. So this is some background why we might not work together that, that best. There is a lot of space for improvement. And there's this problem with us. We don't have much empathy. We don't care so much about what other people think of our work. We, we are a bit arrogant, as I said. But um, once this gets, uh, once we move this aspect of our character, uh, we can work much closer together. And I really need to appreciate developers here because they are much used to work in the open. Designers aren't. And I believe that's a key advantage you have as developers. But um, 
So the first thing we need to change is a mind shift. It's not a using GitHub or not. It's not using that software or not. It's a mind shift in our mindset to have more empathy, which I believe is a quite important thing in um, open source communities. So there's this difference, as you can see in the comic here. There is open source and there is design. Design might be a premium service. It might be tailored to something what the designer believes you need. Well, open source is like, hey, let's go and see where we end up, right? So how do you combine these two things? This, this was a big question of mine when I joined like four years ago, the, community, the open source communities. And I was like, OK, now I have two hobbies. I, I like design. I like open source. Um, jack of all trades, I don't like that. I don't want to do everything in open source communities. And so yeah, I thought, why not combine this both? But I was like struggling quite for a long time how to do that. So one of the first steps I took to improve this was to, to get out of this mindset that, hey, this is my work. Please don't abuse it, don't, don't use it, take permission. And when I started to let go of this, it felt really good because people started to appreciate it way more. They used your work, they didn't abuse it. I was like, okay, people are using this work quite nicely. They didn't do any bad stuff with that. So uh, I was like really surprised how, how well it work, worked out. So I started to like adopt this mindset way more. And one of the concrete things you can do to, to improve this is to use Creative Commons licenses. It's, it's the equivalent of GPL licenses, but for creative works. So it really, it really works great for us designers. And while we could be afraid that people would abuse this work, usually the opposite happens. So if you're a music fan, for example, there's this band called Nine Inch Nails, you might have heard of it, and two of their albums were released under Creative Commons licenses, non-commercial, you could download it for free to listen, and like people were like wondering, okay, how, why do they do that, right? They don't get any money off of this. They just release it for free. But Nine Inch Nails, afterwards analyzed the downloads statistics and analysis where they was downloaded from and later on they toured in these places where the most downloads came from and it was hugely successful although their albums were free under creative commons licenses so this really challenges the classic way of doing creative work or even business commercially commercial wise so before we start bashing like Open licenses, they don't do money, they don't make money, we can't live with that. We need to think of alternative ways how we can deal with that today. So, over a year ago, I stumbled upon some fellow guys at a conference like this in Berlin, and they were doing design and they were like having this group open source design. I was like so surprised because I never heard of that. I was like involved for almost three years. And like no one told me about this. Hey, this exists, right? And these guys were doing great stuff. Their website was completely on GitHub. Their design were open. They open source projects could request design from them. And they would do it. And this was like really the vision I had. But I didn't have the guts to make this happen because I was thinking, okay, I'm alone, why should I, I cannot do this alone. So once I saw that there are people who are thinking in a similar manner than I do, I got really motivated and I started like contributing and I started like talking to these guys and well, I became part of open source design as well. So this is from a past experience. Now a bit more about Mozilla. These are 25 logos, not done by the whole community. There are more by the whole community. These are 25 logos done by me in the past three years for different Mozilla projects. 
And well, many people might expect that, okay, an employee can do that. I'm not an employee, I'm a normal contributor just like every one of us here. So um, I really got, got, got the chance to work closer with a, with a huge project like Mozilla. And because the creative team who was doing for the corporation and foundation stuff, they didn't have the, the time to do all of this. We needed more volunteers, and like people appreciated that, and I took some time off to do all of this stuff, and it really was worth it, and the experience was great. For example, I was, I was like, I was doing a logo for India, um, an Indian community. It's like, it's so far away, you would never get the chance to do that. So, there are some important lessons here, which uh, I'm going to talk to through right now, and how we do design at Mozilla. So I'm going to stop here for a second. If you have a question, please interrupt me. Otherwise, we can also discuss later on. So we started open design at Mozilla. There was a huge need for design. And like people requested me personally, hey Elio, can you do that? Hey Elio, can you do this, please? It was fun because I could like, put a lot of stuff in my resume, I worked for Mozilla on this and that, blah, 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 but it's not the right thing in a community, right? So I pushed to create a group at Mozilla where volunteers could gather and they could talk with staff and like, do design work and contribute just like you contribute a patch to Firefox. We would make design more efficient and employees and volunteers or contributors could work together on stuff. So we do not have only them separately, but a lot of projects would be a collaborative effort between both sides. So um, we, had a, we wanted to have a central place where everyone could request, so it would not be on back channels, back and forth, on emails or similar. Um, and the, one of the biggest important things I believe we, we wanted to do was having designers work, with, um, employees work with contributors. So it wouldn't, mean, it wouldn't mean that their contribution was really important. It was not just, okay, hey, play with this and leave us alone. This was a really important aspect to get all contributors into, into this. And well, last but not least, we want requests to be trackable, everything transparent. We would see what someone would request, if that would make sense if we should work on that or not. So the tools we used was a GitHub repo. It's not a free software open source tool, I guess, but the stuff all hosted on there is free and open source. It worked really well for us. Some people would have needed to learn how to create issues, pull requests and stuff, but it was not a big issue. We would like mostly discuss on issues, on GitHub issues, I mean. And we also had the Mozilla Discourse. It's a forum, it's a web-based forum where people could discuss. And one of the most important aspects was having a monthly call. We would gather at a conference, video conference call and like there would be like five to 20 people talking about design at Mozilla. And this was really great because I, we could like talk face to face, okay, virtually of course, with um, big minds behind Firefox logo, for example, or other designers. And this was really motivating for a lot of people, including me. So if you know Etherpad, this was the Etherpad of the first meeting where everyone was signing their name. And it's really diverse, so many colors, so many people. And it was like, okay, wow, I didn't expect this to be that big. So a lot of people joined. A lot of people wanted to help with that. A lot of people had an opinion on that. So it really felt great to get this going finally. So this is uh, our GitHub. If you want to check it out, it's Mozilla slash Open Design. Our issues are over there. People can request different design requests, logos, banners, and similar. And we would discuss on that whether that makes sense to do or not. Sometimes people request logos for everything. It, and we want to discuss that first. Do you really need a logo? Because right now at Mozilla, we have like 200 logos, 
does make sense really to have a logo for every single little project because like people would see that logo instead of Mozilla. So that's what's what's was bothering us later on. That's uh, that was a small problem, and especially in many countries, people don't get the relation between Mozilla and Firefox. And people really don't know that Mozilla does other stuff apart Firefox. So we wanted to show people, hey, we do also other things than Firefox. Anyway, I'm going to show you two examples here. The first example is a small request from India. There was this, there was this community who wanted to do their Indian meetup, and they needed a sticker for that. So they could give it out to all the participants, put it on laptops, and similar. So the brief was pretty straightforward. The style information and the deadline. The deadline was very reasonable, over three, four weeks time. So yeah, we started doing it. And then there was uh, one designer who like, came up with a concept for this. This is a building in India in the city where the Mira would hold place. I'm sorry, I'm not very geographically accurate. But he started with this concept, and we like um, ping-ponged some feedback over this. So he worked together with me and some other people, and the final result was this. So this was a sticker which we created for this. This is one of the smaller requests. It's not a huge request, but it was a very it was a very efficient effort, which we just finished in like two three days. And, yeah, well, the Indians have a sticker now for their meetup, so this is really great. Well, there is also something bigger than this, which was not as easy. As you can see, this was a quite easy request. But one of the bigger, and I think the biggest challenge we had and will probably have in the next years, well, we are doing a redesign. So, in a few months, you will not see the Mozilla logo as it was. We have a problem with our logo right now, which some people might not recognize, but um, we don't have an icon. We have only the M, which uh, we got sued by Mars, uh, almost sued by Mars at one point because M and M's. It was like very similar to M and M. Anyway, that's a long story. So we wanted to create a new brand identity and like really express what Mozilla is to people. So we launched our blog, Mozilla Open Design, and we, uh, Mozilla hired an agency, Johnson Banks, to do the design, working with a creative team, working with a community. So it was really, really interesting because an agency was doing that, but the community would like give feedback and comment and like get involved in all the decisions. So this was one of the um, few use cases where open source design would be applied to, a, to such a big organization than Mozilla. Um, yeah. Something, as I said, what's wrong with it now is that we don't have an icon. Like the biggest brands can be recognized by a small little fave icon, icon, whatever, in very small spaces. Yet we didn't have that. Oh, someone wrote to me. Uh, that shouldn't happen. Anyway, <laughs> so we wanted to do that. Uh, two months ago in London, we had uh, the Mozilla All Hands, where over 1,300 uh, 1, uh, Mozillians would meet up. And we did this gallery, the Open Design Gallery, where people could come see the concepts of our rebranding and comment what they like about. So for example, there were concepts about the fight, that Mozilla needs to fight for doing that, what we do. Some people supported that, some people not. They would like put post-its on it with comments. Some other were like doing the good. So, we, so Mozilla was for them some, someone who was doing good for, for the internet. And like five other concepts, people, people would express, like physically, I would like post, uh, post it on the wall. And they would say what they liked about it and what not. So 
This was like over crossing borders, not only virtually, but also physically. There were, there were over 200 people there commenting, and it felt really great to see all these people see your work. So these are some of the early concepts. I know it's scary to, to see that Mozilla can be different than what you are used to. Um, but this is not final. These are seven concepts which people will comment on, which you can really comment on on the blog. After, after this, feel free to, to go to the website and comment. And we are going to choose what direction we will take. This will take quite some time. We will get, th out of these seven concepts, we'll get three concepts in September. And we'll have the final result in December. So people like you and all other contributors will shape all of this. So you, can, you are free to get involved, even though if you're not a designer, also a developer, we always need help from um, programmers to code some image generators, for example, or other stuff. And if you have an opinion, which I believe all of you do on the logo designs concepts, you can f feel free to go to our blog, Open Design, and just comment on your favorite or least favorite design with uh, what you have to say about that. And all, our, all of your comments will be taken into account and will shape the Mozilla brand according to what the community wants. So yeah, design can be open source as well. It's not only about code, it's also about other non-technical contribution paths as design. So next time you're doing an open source project, I hope you take this into account and think that not only the code needs to be open, but maybe also other aspects. Thank you very much, and I hope that you enjoyed it, and please, if you have any questions. Are there, so thank you very much. Um, are there any questions at this point? So what, what I'd like to, to ask is uh, how many people are, um, how many people are actually involved in, in the process you just described? Yes, um, from the community side, there are like 10 active designers and maybe a few more designers who, get, who become active from time to time. And well, there's the agency, which is doing the work, so, and the creative team. And if you count all the people who are commenting on on how they like the brand or what uh, feedback they have on. It could be easily a thousand. But um, yeah, it depends on which scope you mean. But they're like hardly working, actively working on that. There are like 20, 30 people. Okay, and um, you are completely globally distributed, uh, a complete distributed team. Or yes. are there some, uh, do you make some, some meetups or some conferences for this specific topic as well? Um, so in London we have the All Hands where uh, all Mozillians would meet up in a single place. That what, that's one of the events where all of us meet. But a part of that, everything is happening digi um, virtually. And yeah, we are distributed. We have like designers from the US, um, Latin America, Europe, India, Malaysia, also Indonesia, yeah. Okay, I understand. <clears throat> um, you gave uh, your contact details. Um, um, what would you recommend uh, as a first step if you want to contribute to your to your project? Yes. Um, is it a good idea to? Uh, contact someone uh, via email? Uh, is it good to uh, reach out uh, on some other means? What is your recommendation? I personally prefer when people like just start to ask a question on GitHub because these things would not get to me personally and 
this would I would not be a deal breaker with this because I'm not the community. The community is the community. So um, it, it would be uh, the best way to reach out is to open an issue on GitHub and uh, comment what you want. If you don't feel comfortable with that, feel free to also to reach personally, of course. Okay. Question. How do you evaluate um, feedback? I mean, from my personal experience, like um, when you deal with something like design, where it's basically or often a matter of personal taste, everyone can have an opinion, and it's tricky when you have like a very vocal minority, like voting something down or voting something specific up. Do you just read through the comments, or do you put it into some statistical, I don't know, data? Yeah. So that's a very interesting question, actually, and it's very blurry. For example, um, in general, we would evaluate if this comments actually had a reason behind it. Because if you say, okay, I don't like that because it sucks, um, well, sorry, that's not helpful, right? If you say, like, we have comments like this um, on the first logo, okay, that looks like the eye of Sauron. Okay, that makes sense, okay, I, I get that, why you get that feeling, and we take this into account. Or like we had some, um, some comments about that, I feel like this feels too big brother to me, like being watched instead of watching the watchers. Like, so these are comments which are very constructive, which, um, which are helpful, and saying like, this is too colorful, this is too simple, this is too complex, doesn't really help. So also design is not, um, it's not 100% a matter of taste. There are a few things which are, which are psychological, which are scientific, and when people are starting to, to reason with this kind of arguments, we can start a discussion, and it usually ends up really, really productive. So yeah, that's how we deal with it. Any other questions? Anything else? In this case, thank you very much again. Thank you very much.